Hey everybody, welcome back to another full self-driving beta video. My name is John and I live in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. I'm taking full self-driving beta version 11.4.1 over to get a coffee. I'm on my lunch break. I'm going to double tap down and the car is going to take off. There we go. It looks like it's limiting max speed based on the road type. We're going to be turning left here. Immediately we have a car here we're going to have to wait for. Hopefully it doesn't go. Okay, <laughs> Giving them a little bit of a a false message there. It looks like they got a little bit confused as to why I was trying to make the turn prior to them passing. So a little bit awkward there. You know, I'm going to report that because it, it probably just wasn't natural enough to allow that person some comfort. I am getting a couple strange looks. I'm looking around. <laughs> People are seeing my GoPro camera on top of my car, and I think they're very curious, you know, what's going on here. I, I know that I'm one of the few, maybe 100 people or so, that have this latest version of beta. I will say in the past couple of days that I've been testing, I haven't noticed any significant improvements. Uh, at the same time, I haven't noticed any significant regressions either. So it seems to operate similarly, similarly, I, can't, I can never say that word correctly, to the previous version. I have noticed, however, that it is a little bit smoother. It operates a little bit smoother. So here it is getting into the right turn lane. This is exactly what it needs to do. Now let's see how well it can see past this car. The A pillar or B pillar camera, actually I think it's the front cameras on the, on the, on the front that need to be able to see here. It's a, we can turn right on red and it looks like it did it just fine. Okay, that was really well done. Okay, so coming up here, you can see here now the route, I'm gonna be pulling into the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot heading through the drive through and then I'm gonna come out onto Higgins Road and it's gonna be a very challenging left turn. And I'm gonna let it try to attempt to do this U-turn. It's not the normal path. There's actually a short, shorter way to get through there, but I'm gonna let it do its thing. Here it's slowing down. Uh, it saw that other car there on the right. Now, something really interesting just happened right there. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in almost every single one of my videos in the past I had to step on the accelerator to push it past that area and it seems to have gone and done it all on its own so it, it, before I always thought that it was seeing like a, a stop sign or something that wasn't really there but this time it didn't do that at all so that's the first time in a very long time that that seems to have been corrected or that that it didn't I didn't observe that behavior and it, it, I'm not sure if that's going to be consistent or not. It's just an observation. Coming up here, we're going to be turning right. Okay, we're going to have to go through this light and then the parking lot's on the right. Actually, I take that back. It's before the park, before the um, traffic light. Here it is right here. Okay. And right turn signal went on. It turned off. Now, there's nobody here that... Okay, so it looks like the car... Ooh. Okay, this is not good. I'm going to have to back up a little bit. Uh, that, I don't know why it did that. All right, I'm going to slow it down and let's take a look at this as a replay. It seems to want to go in there and then it kind of changes its mind. I really don't understand why it did what it did here. Very confusing, the path planner there. It's un unusual and I did have to take over. It, it really struggled getting into the parking lot there. Uh, and and the turn signal stopped going on. Now, nobody was behind me, so I let it kind of do that. But my goodness, that was not good at all. And I didn't get a chance to report it. I'll hit the camera button. I know that I'm one of the few that still has that camera button. I think they saw some of my tweets or maybe some of my videos. Not sure what happened or how I got added to the OG group, but did get added in. Very thankful for that. So if Tesla, if anyone from the Tesla team is watching, thank you for that. As you can see, we're going to be turning right, and then it's going to try to do a U-turn, which is going to be almost impossible. But the tentacle here seems to be wanting to go left. I mean, there's a huge barrier in the middle. It definitely cannot do that. I mean, it's recognizing that it wants to kind of hop over there and make that turn. But uh, let's see what happens here. Okay, so the car in front of us is about ready to pull out. Okay, and it is clear, so we are good to go. And hopefully it goes without hesitation. Good. 
Okay, very good. Ooh, getting all the way over into the left turn lane. And coming back out. Okay, thankfully no one behind us. And that would have been a good spot, I, I would think, to try to do the U-turn. But it wants to attempt the U-turn up here a little bit further. So, getting in the left turn lane. Turn signal goes on for this. And when we have the green arrow, it's going to be a protected left turn to be able to go a protected U-turn, I should say. Nobody behind us, thankfully, so we can give it a little bit of leeway. Here it says, unable to complete maneuver, assist now. Now, previously I would allow it, I would kind of push it just to test it to see what it would do, but those days of uh, set, setting, up, setting myself up for an adventure are a little bit over. <laughs> I got myself into some trouble. Someone honked at me, I almost got in an accident. I'm not going to play that game anymore. If it says it, it, it cannot complete the maneuver and there's other traffic around, I'm not going to let it, I'm not going to force it or try to make it do it. There's no point. All right, lane selection is really nice. This is where we need to be. And it's going to come up here. It's going to turn left. We're going to have probably some traffic that we're going to have to deal with. So it'll be interesting to see that how it gets through here. Let's see here. So any minute here, we're gonna have to turn on the turn signal. Okay, there it is. Turn signal going on, getting into the left lane here. Nobody behind us coming through. There's a, a guy walking there. Uh, thankfully, we, we beat him to the intersection there. Okay, coming through, really nice. Now this is the hard part. Okay, I've filmed this a number of times. This makes me anxious every single time. We're gonna come up to the stop sign and then it needs to cut across this very, very busy road. Let's see how well it does. At one point, it actually skipped past the stop sign. Let's see if it comes to a complete stop. Okay, it did. There we go, coming forward and going for it. Yes. Oh, well done, nice. Okay, beautiful. We got lucky with the traffic. I will say there weren't any cars and now it needs to get all the way over to the right because we are gonna be turning onto Grimson Lane or Evanston Street, excuse me, which is this next one right up here. Really well done, you know, that always impresses me, seeing seeing it do things like that. It's really, really fantastic to see that. Okay, getting over. Uh, I don't like how it gets into the turn lane without turning on the turn signal first. That is always a pet peeve of mine when someone in front of me does that. But it's not a deal breaker. It's not a big, a big deal per se. I mean, at least it's not slowing down considerably before getting into the turn lane. Okay, now it's going to slow down because it says that we're going to be at, at the final destination here. So today's ride was really short. Overall, I think it did a decent job. I mean, it did make some mistakes getting into the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot. That was the first mistake. The second mistake was that U-turn. Obviously, it couldn't do the U-turn at all. Everything else was pretty good, pretty solid. Driving up in these suburb areas, it's hit or miss. It's still kind of, you know, it impresses and it disappoints. And they kind of balance each other out. So I can't really say that this is, you know, fantastic or, you know, something that I, I really practical that I can use on a regular basis without having to worry. Uh, it still does produce some anxiety. Uh, it's actually a little bit more stressful using it than not using it. But if you are a geek like me and you enjoy testing things, then it's, it's fun. It's, it's, a, it's, a great, uh, it's a great program to be a part of. But if you're looking for something functional that you can leverage comfortably and enjoy, it's really not there yet. Uh, so ho hopefully you can come to that conclusion by watching a lot of these videos. Some people will brag about how great it is. They'll say, oh, it's fantastic. It can do this. It can do that. And then other people like me are a little bit more realistic. There are things that it can do well, and I'll, I'll talk about those, but I'll also talk about the areas where it needs improvement. And there's quite a few of those. And a lot of the areas where it needs improvement when you report it to Tesla, you would think that that feedback would make its way into a future revision. And I, I don't know how Tesla's prioritizing that or how they're processing user feedback, but it, it does appear that a lot of that feedback 
is is not being processed or in other words is not being incorporated into future releases and i think that's because of the immense challenge because you know you there's that whole there's that whole um how, how, how should you say there's, there's like the whole mantra or the whole um concept of you fix one thing you break another thing and i think that's very applicable when it comes to software and when you're dealing with ai and neural nets it's not really physical changes. You can't just modify something for one particular environment. So it's really challenging. I don't know how Tesla is processing that feedback and using it, but it is fascinating to me to see these revisions as they go out and kind of how it acts differently. And it's hard to identify those because they're so, so subtle. And I feel like every single time it's just tweaking the algorithm to maybe turn a little bit smoother, maybe the angle's a little bit nicer, or little things. It's nothing that stands out. It's like, oh my gosh, that's a huge change. With the exception of version 11 when it first came out and how it behaved on the highway. And I have yet to test it thoroughly on the highway uh, since I just got this version on, I think it was Friday. So I haven't gotten a chance to really go out on the highway and test it out. But I am seeing from other people that it is behaving similarly. There's nothing that's been uh, specifically addressed as far as merging and you know staying in the passing lane. Those are still issues that exist today with version 11.4.1. I will test that a little bit more. People are saying that it hesitates when there's a double yellow line or a yellow line in the middle of the road and there's oncoming traffic. It's slowing down. I have not seen that yet. I have not witnessed that. It's not to say it's not happening in this area, I just haven't had it happen on my end. Uh, And I hope to, actually not hope, but I do plan on being down in the city later this week. And I will bring my car this time. I won't take the train. So look forward to that. If you're not subscribed, subscribe so you don't miss that. I'll be testing version 11.4.1 down in the city of Chicago. And hopefully we'll get some some great footage down there. I'm open to feedback. If you guys want to see a particular area of the city, let me know. I think I'll probably take it on Lakeshore Drive, take it by the old Sears Tower, which is now the Willis Tower. I'll probably take it over to the Chicago Theater, uh, Millennium Park. Those are kind of my go-to spots. I usually try to stop by the Union Station. But if you have thoughts or ideas on other areas, let me know. Uh, Thanks a lot so much, everybody, for watching. Hope you're having a great day and you had a good Mother's Day. Ooh, that was a bird that came down and actually hit my car right there. That was really weird. (laughs) I've never had that happen before. Uh, And I've been driving for a long time, so I don't know what, what, what was going on with that bird. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.